In this video, we're going to be talking about how to use a systematic approach to effectively increase your articulation clarity and speed. So having a good crisp and clear articulation is something that is extremely crucial for any brass player. On euphonium more than most instruments, it can be very easy to achieve a very flowing and singing legato style, but it can actually be pretty difficult to achieve a clear articulation when needed. In this video, I will take you through some ways that I have learned to both clear up my articulation and how you can learn to maintain that clarity and quality at faster speeds. So first, it's really important to understand the concept of articulating a single note. When using your tongue to articulate, what exactly is happening inside your mouth? Where are you supposed to place the tongue inside your mouth when you articulate? A lot of people will say that you should strike your tongue right near the front of the roof of your mouth, which is correct in part. I like to think of placing my tongue right near the front of the roof of my mouth, right around where the gums meet the back of my teeth. But what is happening inside the mouth when you properly articulate a note? What you should concentrate on when starting your notes is that the tongue is actually the thing that releases the air on your first articulation. You should actually be thinking about pulling your tongue away from the teeth when you start the note. If you don't believe me, then just try saying the syllable toe or do, and while saying that, really concentrate on what you are feeling your tongue do when you say the consonant of the syllable. Is it striking the top of your teeth or is it pulling away? Chances are, if you try that, you will find that the moment you use the consonant, your tongue is actually pulling away from the back of the teeth. It's easy to mistake this though when you're actually playing because there's so much going on that you need to think about other than that that it can actually get a little bit overwhelming. Secondly, the motion happens so fast that it can seem like you're really just striking the back of the teeth with your tongue. This can definitely be a cause of an unclear articulation. So I'm going to show you one very simple exercise that you can use to work on clarity in a slower scenario, and then later in the video we'll get into how to speed up this concept in a quicker application. This exercise can be found in the Arben Method book, which which I would say is an absolute must for any brass player. This book can honestly be used from day one of any brass player's learning and can be used for an entire lifetime of practice, although I'm sure most of you will at the very least have heard of this book before. Be on the lookout on my channel for a video I will make of my full Arben routine and why I've chosen certain exercises to help maintain my playing from day to day. So back to our first exercise. It is located near the front of the Arben in the first study section, and in this you can really practice the concept of releasing the air with the tongue rather than striking each note. It is important that you try and maintain a great quality of tone on every note and try to make each articulation very uniform, almost like you were a bricklayer trying to produce the exact same brick every single time. If you'd like to know how you can improve your tone quality, I've also made a video on the topic and you can find it by clicking right here. So you should play this at a pretty slow tempo to start out, maybe 100 beats per minute or so, and just focus on quality of sound and uniform articulation. One thing I like to do is to play these exercises three different times, once as written, once as eighth notes rather than quarter notes, and a third time as sixteenth notes, all at the same tempo. That way you can work on three different speeds and try to maintain the quality of your articulation through all of them. If you can't play this at the sixteenth note speed, then definitely don't be discouraged. Just try and slow down the overall tempo until you're able to play it consistently, and then slowly move up the metronome mark, maintaining the fundamentals we have discussed. The next exercise I would use will be meant to help increase the speed of your single tongue on a single note. So as you can see, this is a systematic way to speed up your tongue through changing the rhythm you're playing. When you play this, it's extremely important to not forget about the amount of air that is required to make your tongue work. To put it in a more visual manner, just imagine that there's a flag hanging on a pole, and really the flag will only flap back and forth and be secure if there's wind blowing behind it. It's mostly self-explanatory, but I would definitely urge you to start this at a very slow tempo, and don't speed up your tempo until you feel you're extremely comfortable at the fastest note speed in the exercise. One more thing I urge you to not do is to not articulate too hard while playing this. If you're or articulating really forcefully, this will make it much more difficult to speed up and will only teach you to be able to start notes with a really hard tongue, which is honestly not ideal. If you want to play this exercise a couple times and do it once with a very light tongue and once with a more accented tongue, that will actually help you to show the difference. The third and final exercise that I'll show you in this video will sort of combine the previous two into an exercise that will combine a fast tongue while you have to move your fingers at the same time. I understand that this coordination is definitely something that a lot of people struggle with, and this exercise is designed to work on both of those things. 
Again, this will be out of the Arbon Method book and is located in the Scales section. If you would like to either purchase this book or see the sections I have specifically talked about in this video, those will both be linked down in the description. The great thing about this section of the book is that it will go through several different keys with the same exact pattern that is in this exercise. So once you feel comfortable in one key pattern, you can take the exact same concepts into as many keys as you'd like to. Again, this is meant to combine the clarity and speed aspects of tonguing, and they kind of go together in conjunction with each other. If you don't feel like you can play them clearly at the tempo you're going, then just slow down your metronome to a place where you can play comfortably, and then slowly move the metronome back up over time. So I would set the metronome to around 80 beats per minute to start out, and then move it up a couple clicks every day so that you're reinforcing the good habits you've developed at the slower speed. I'd say that the fastest speed you should aim to be able to single tongue should be faster than the slowest speed that you should be able to double tongue, just so that you don't have any music that is in a speed where you don't feel comfortable doing either. All of these are meant to be working on single tonguing speed, although you can work in double tonguing into this last exercise if you'd like. I'll be making a second part to this video where I'll be covering how to improve both double tonguing and triple tonguing, so look out for that on my channel soon. So with these three exercises, you will be working on clarity of articulation at a slow speed, speeding up your articulation in a systematic way, and then combining those two concepts with the third exercise. And from there, you can just find other parts of the Arbon book where you can expand these concepts to further improve this aspect of your playing. My last bit of advice would be that this is an aspect of your playing that constantly needs to be at least maintained, but even now it's something that I really try to actively improve all the time. Over time, if you don't continue to polish up your tonguing speed and clarity, they can easily slip and get worse, just like any other aspect of your playing. Although the great thing about articulation speed in particular is that you don't always need to be actually playing your instrument to work on this. You can just practice using the syllable away from the instrument literally anywhere you want, and that will be a really good way to help people that may not have every hour of the day to have their instrument in their hand. Having said this, nothing will really beat having the instrument to your face when trying to improve quickly. So keep some time set aside every day where you can practice this, and I guarantee you that you'll see big improvements in your articulation over time. Thank you all so much for watching this video, I really appreciate it and hope that you find these videos useful. If you enjoyed this and want to see more videos like this, then please consider subscribing to my channel and hitting the notification bell to be one of the first people notified when I upload a new video. Thank you all again for watching and I hope you have a great day.